What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today, we're gonna start off with the unboxing first. I got an ETS intercooler that's four inches wide and I got the wrinkle black intercooler piping. So let's get started with the unboxing. The reason why it's two boxes is I think one is the intercooler and one is the piping. So, <laughs> lots of packing material. Alright, here's some clamps and some couplers. <laughs> it's kind of hard to take out. Oh, the intercooler itself is pretty heavy. <laughs> I've never done any intercooler mods so this is my first intercooler that I've taken out and wow I didn't know these things were that heavy all right so that's what's in the first box just the intercooler itself okay so the intercooler comes taped up front and back and the piping holes are blocked off right here and right here so let's open the front I did have it stenciled white so I'm excited to see that. And that would be the back portion. Let me do the other side. <laughs> it's kind of tiny, but when you uh, install the intercooler, I guess this much only shows up in the front of the car. So we'll get to see that today. I wanted to match the theme of the car, so I got everything in black. All right, box number two. So round two. The first box that they sent me for the intercooler piping was for WRX. And when I let the company know, Jacob, shout out to Jacob. He sent me my Evo intercooler piping through One Day Air. And it arrived and I'll open that right now. These foam things are awesome. They're, I think that they're from Japan, but they make so much less clutter. And I mean, when you throw it away, I think you could recycle them. I don't know, but yeah, these are a lot better than traditional peanuts. All right, in the package, there are stickers, of course, and then there's a packaging list. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but right there. All right. Ooh, this is kind of heavy for size. All right, since this is the lower and upper intercooler set, it comes with four pipes. It comes with a lot of these couplers. So six couplers. And these are actually called clamps, not couplers. These are the couplers. All right. So that's the extent of this box. And I'll start unwrapping them. So this is the fully unboxed intercooler set, intercooler piping set. It comes with six couplers, four pipes, uh, about 10 clamps, and packaging list. And you can't forget the stickers. Okay, so now let's go and install everything. All right, so we're outside and I'm gonna start undoing the front end. I'm so glad that I have these quick releases. It makes life so much easier if you're modding your car all the time. Uh, if you do open up your hood and do a lot of front end work, I highly recommend quick release. It really helps. Okay, so to start this off, we're gonna start off by unclamping this clamp right here and then pull off this pipe. This should lead all the way down to the intercooler itself. 
and I'm gonna do undo this portion and then for the inner cooler there are two bolts on the bottom one right here and one right here and then after that you're going to have to undo these hangers it's rubber so you just pull it off one right there one on this side and then I'm gonna undo these this is the lower inner cooler piping section so undo these pull it off and then there's a bolt right here you're gonna be undoing this bolt right here and this leads up to the engine I'll show you guys right now so there's two pipes on this portion there's two uh, outlets one goes straight out to the blow-off valve right here and then one on the bottom right here it leads straight to the throttle body which is right there so what I'm going to do for this section is I'm going to undo the bolts right here and right here and then pull these out and then reconnect these after I, I'm done installing the ETS intercooler piping. The main reason to do this modification is to cool down the engine faster and what I've read on the forums is that you don't really need a tune to do this so that's why I'm doing this because I don't want to tune my car until I get maybe a bigger turbo. So let's get started on this. Look how shiny this Cusco is. It's still really nice. And remember that engine bay cleaning video I had? Look how it is. It's still very clean. Well, back to the topic. Let's get back to unbolting this. The space is kind of tight, so you're gonna have to do this pretty slowly. Once this starts moving on its own, I think you should be good. And then I'm gonna give it a little pull doesn't want to come off okay so this has been on here for eight plus years so it does not want to come off all right there we go and that portion is off so I'm just gonna leave it a little covered on a little bit so that I could pull out the other portions first I don't want anything to go inside of it I'm only doing undoing one of these because I'm going to be replacing the full upper intercooler piping. So while you're undoing the upper intercooler piping, it's going to be two of these clamps, one up top and one on the bottom. And it's going to be two bolts right here. So I have a little bit of trauma from last time. I broke the clock spring and I bought the part. It cost 90 bucks. It wasn't that $40, $50 that I was talking about. $90 for a little piece of plastic. So I'm gonna pull on this very carefully so I don't break anything else. I mean, I think this is where the Freon goes, so I don't want that to break. So I'm gonna pull on this very gently and hopefully I don't break anything. All right, there we go. So. This is the upper intercooler piping. I'll show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison after I put it together. All right, so now we're on the intercooler portion part and there's two bolts. Okay, so whenever you take out any of the bolts and nuts, they don't give you replacement nuts or bolts. So you're gonna have to save these and use these for the aftermarket parts. So now we're going to take off the lower intercooler piping because uh, the intercooler itself is only held in by the two hangers because I unbolted the two bolts on the bottom. To make this process a little bit easier, I'm gonna take off this bolt right here. That should unbolt the lower intercooler piping. <laughs> right. So eight years of rot makes it almost impossible to take this out. So at first I tried taking out the intercooler before I took out the lower intercooler piping and it didn't work. So I had to end up undoing the lower intercooler piping first. And then I used my hands and my legs <laughs> to pull this out. So now let's do the intercooler. So the intercooler itself is hanging by two hangers. It's really easy to take out. You just pull on it. And then you pull on this side and the inner cooler should be done. So right now I'm just loosening the 
blow-off valve pipe and the throttle body pipe so I could take off the lower intercooler piping. All right, so the hardest part about this whole modification is the inter lower intercooler piping. <sighs> all the pipes are all, I guess, rubber rotted. I'm not sure if that's the right term, but everything's stuck to each other. So <laughs> it's really hard to pull everything apart. So right now I'm gonna try undoing a bolt that's back here somewhere and then I tried pulling from the top the rubber hoses but it wouldn't come off so I might end up having to pull it off from the throttle body and the blow-off valve but I'll show you guys what I'm doing right now just to make your lives a little bit easier when you guys do this modification That's a lot easier. <laughs> so undo the bottom portion and then pull from the bottom. The clamps that ETS gives you, it's not metric, it's imperial. So the size that you have to use for the ETS ones is 7 16 That's a little bit bigger than a 10 millimeter and a little bit smaller than 11 millimeter or a little bit smaller than a 12 millimeter. So it's probably an 11 millimeter, but 7 16 works. All right, guys, this is a comparison of the old and the new. If you look at the old one, it looks like most of it is rubber. And the reason why we switch it over is because if it's metal, there's less chance of it flexing like this while it's taking in the air. That's the reason why we change it to aftermarket parts. And look at the new ETS intercooler. That looks amazing. I got the option of $100 more for black powder coating. Look at this. It's so dinky compared to the new one. So the new one I got is a 4 inch. Look at that guys. That's maybe an inch off. It's dinky. <laughs> Alright, so let's get to installing the intercooler and the intercooler piping. Alright guys, before I install this, I just want to point out, look at these welds. These welds are awesome. In the welding world, I guess they're called stacking dimes. The quality in these are amazing. So, all right, without further ado, let us install the intercooler. So they say there's no modification needed for the four inch. I guess it's technically true, but I think you have to take off the front crash bar because I'm like this much off be able to install it but yeah I'm gonna take off the front crash bar by taking off the headlights and then there's two bolts here two bolts on the bottom and that's for the both sides all right guys so it's not just eight bolts it's actually 16 so it's two up here two on the bottom two at this hole and then two in this hole so I had to take off these little rubber bumper things. They cover it so that, uh, I don't know, it's extra protection, I guess. So I'm gonna do, undo all those and then take off the fr front crash beam bar. Now hopefully I could fit the intercooler inside after I take it out. So I pulled out the crash beam a little bit. It was only a little off to being, to being able to install the intercooler. So hopefully this is enough so that I could install the intercooler. Okay, it looks like it's promising. Or it feels like it's promising. All right, so I got the first hanger in. All right, and the second hanger. Okay, so. That freed up a lot of space. All right, so the screws are going in. Yay. <laughs> oh man, I was worried I'd have to return this before I celebrate too early. Let me get this bolt in. Yes, it got in. So hopefully I can put the crash beam in without too much of a resistance. And then, I'll go into installing the upper and lower intercooler piping. 
there is some space right here, but this is pretty much against the radiator. I'm not sure if that's how it's designed, but that's the whole no modification necessary. Hopefully that's the case. Right now, the most worrying thing is that if I put the coupler right here, will it be able to bend over so that it fits like this? I think that's good. Now I'm gonna put the upper inner cooler piping. I'm gonna make it match so it looks like, like that. So put that in first. Then put in the little coupler. All right, so it went in. If you look right here, this fitment is not working and the fitment of the inner cooler itself, it's hit against this portion which is why I took out the, the front crash bar. And I don't know, it's not fitting correctly. If you look right here, this wire at, or this coupler isn't lined up correctly, but that's the only way to make this part fit. Okay, so after I bolted up everything, it's very sturdy. Doesn't seem like it's gonna come off. It's a little bit crooked right here, but so far, this is probably one of the most time consuming modifications besides the painting, but that's that's because you have to wait for a while. If you're ever gonna do this, save a whole day in advance. I mean, I started at 12, right now it's maybe five o'clock. All right, so another part I made a mistake on is I have to take off this pipe. So that pipe is replaced by this pipe, which ETS provides. This is the lower inner cooler piping, and this is what the blow-off valve pipe goes to. So when you're taking this off, it's best to wiggle it around and then take it off. All right, so the big clamp that's included, it's the 2.75 inch clamp, TB288. This one goes to the throttle body. What I did was I slid the lower inner cooler piping underneath, and then I'm gonna put this on top of the piping. Then I'm going to put in the inner cooler piping first at the throttle body. Okay, so the throttle bottle piping is in. Okay, so now for the blow off valve piping. This one you have to save from what you had before, the stock one. So I'm gonna put it down there for now. Then plug this in. Okay, I think that's good. <laughs> All right, and now I'm gonna tighten this up. Okay, don't tighten it too hard because this is all aluminum. Now we're coming to the final parts of the installation. So I'm gonna take off the tape and then install the lower inner cooler piping to the actual inner cooler itself. And then don't forget a clamp. Has to be on both pipes, the inner cooler and the pipe itself. All right, so the stock version it comes with two screws that you could uh, bolt onto the body, but the aftermarket ETS, it only comes with one. So here, this is the position where you have to put it in. Right here. Should bolt up right there. The one in the back, it doesn't, uh, there's no bracket that connects in the back. So it just it's just held by this one. All right, so the inner cooler, the lower inner cooler piping, and the upper inner cooler piping are all installed. <sighs> Finally done. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna dress up the car and then I'll show you guys the result. After a long day of work, I finally finished installing the ETS inner cooler and the inner cooler piping. I'd say this is one of the harder projects, so keep a whole day planned ahead just to install this. For me, it was a four inch ETS inner cooler and I think there was a problem with fitment. I'm, on the website, it says there's no modification needed, but I guess that's true in a sense. If you take off the crash bar or a crash beam, whatever the front thing is, and then you install the inner cooler and then you put it back, then it works. But if you want to slide it up, it will not work. But besides that, look how it looks, guys. Look at that. That looks awesome. I mean, 
I installed this because one, it not only looks cool, but two, it cools down the engine a lot quicker and hopefully makes the engine last longer. And you know what this is for. I'm definitely going to get another turbo, but that I might have to wait a little because I have to save some funds to install and I guess tune. I do have an E85 kit, well not E85, but a flex fuel tuning kit that I haven't installed yet. That I'm going to install at the same time as the turbo. So for now, this will have to do. So that concludes today's video. Don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>